Hey guys, Jay Young here with Young Red Angus. Thank you so much for making this video right here a part of your day. In today's video, I'm gonna be discussing with you guys rotationally grazing cattle on a spring cover crop mix. We'll explore things like when to plant, how to choose the species that are going to fit your specific goals, the benefit of those species or the benefits of the cover crops, the benefits of having multiple cover crops in your system, uh, when to start grazing, and why rotationally grazing cattle on cover crops matters. So before we get into today's video, I want to share with you that this video is sponsored by Green Cover Seeds. We use their smart mix calculator, so make sure you go to greencover.com and check out all the cover crop seeds that they provide for your needs. For those of you guys who don't know, at Young Red Angus, we raise our cattle on cover crops year round. And so we definitely need these spring cover crop mixes to get our cattle through June and into early July. So this has been a staple of what we've used from the beginning. If you are new to raising cattle on cover crops or utilizing cover crops in your grazing system, I think that you're gonna find that these mixes, especially a spring mix, is something that you can utilize in your operation that will allow your cattle to thrive while improving the health of your soil. So even if you're not in a situation like me where you raise your cattle on cover crops year round, let's say you typically have ground that you use for hay, uh, adding cover crops is a great way uh, to lengthen out the days of grazing on some of your grass and then you can purchase hay uh, over the winter months and really improve your soil health rather than just taking off the hay every single year. So this is a great system to get into uh, and it's what I want to talk about today. The first thing that we want to look into when we're doing a spring cover crop mix is, is when to plant. So we typically plant in the beginning of March um, and March through April works really well for us. What you'll need to do is, is ask the question, what is my number one goal? So I'm assuming your number one goal is grazing. So you're gonna wanna pick something like oats, beardless trit, or uh, barley, or, or a plant like that uh, in this, to plant in the springtime as the main part of your mix for grazing. And so that's what we do is we pick oats uh, for the main part of our grazing. And so the, the easiest way to do this for you is go to greencover.com and use their smart mix calculator and that'll help you get, get you started and kind of know when uh, you need to plant or when you can start planting these spring mixes in your area. It works all those, those things out for you. So you can put in your goals uh, for what you want to accomplish and then the calculator kind of does the rest. And if you need help beyond that, you can call one of the reps. Uh, I know I'm plugging them hard, but I, I'm doing it because I really believe in what they're doing. And like I use the smart mix calculator every single time I put together a mix. So that kind of helps you understand when you want to get started it just depends on your area um, and when you can get your whatever that main forage grass is that you're wanting to put in with your mix in so now that you have the idea of when you want to get started planning um, the next thing you want to do is is look at what's going to go into your mix now a good rule of thumb is uh, to get the best benefit of plant sharing micronutrients with one another you want to have a diversity of two grasses two legumes two brassicas and two broadleafs. That being said, I did not follow that rule in this particular case. One, because I don't have a huge success with a lot of legumes that we've used in the past with these spring mixes. So I just picked spring peas. Um, they work really great with, with oats. And the other thing I did was, is I only picked oats for the grass because I like the fact that the cattle can graze it for a long time and I don't have to worry about the beards getting infected in their jaws. So I picked oats and I picked spring peas for those two plants, but because I picked one of the, each of those species, I upped my diversity on the others. I picked three brassicas and I picked three broadleafs. So the three brassicas that I picked are daikon radish, turnips, I'm sorry, daikon radish, trophy rape, and forage colliards. And then we did uh, flax, phacelia, and chicory. So in this particular mix, my go-tos that I use every single time is oats, peas, flax, uh, daikon radish, and rape. Those five are in every single mix. And then I'm constantly adding new things to see how they work in the, in the particular mix. This time I used, the three new things I used was Facilia, um, the forage colliards, and the um, chicory. So 
two of those, the Facilia has done amazing and the Forge Collards have done amazing. Not all that impressed with how the chicory did. So when you're putting together your mix and you find things that work, you, you want to do that. You want to keep using those things that work and then keep bringing other things in that may work in your system. So I've used other things like woolly pod vetch. I've used all kinds of different clovers. Um, there's a, a whole bunch of different things I've used that don't work in our area. That doesn't mean that it won't work for you, but it doesn't work for our, air, for our area. And so I eliminate those things and I'm constantly trying new things. And I really recommend that for you when you're picking these mixes. Right now, let's talk about each one of those and the benefits of each one. So oats are a fast growing spring grass um, that are gonna provide a lot of forage for your cattle and that you, it's something that you can graze for a longer period of time. So oats is the grass that is in every single one of our spring mixes. It's the base of our spring mixes. And because of the, the whole beard, uh, beards of uh, on the triticale and the barley getting caught in their jaw, that's the reason why I stick with oats every single time. Um, the next thing is the spring peas. Now the spring peas will fix nitrogen at the rate that we put them in, they don't fix enough nitrogen to make a huge difference. So, but I want one legume in it and are in these mixes and spring peas is the one thing I found that consistently will vine up with the oats, capture that sunlight um, and, and do a good job in these mixes. So that's why I pick the spring oats. On the brassica side of things, the rape, trophy rapeseed puts down a huge taproot down into the ground all three of them do, but Trophy Rapeseed does a great job of getting really low. Now, cattle do not like it as much as they like the Forage Collards or the Daikon Radish, but I like all three because the tap roots on all three are going to do different things and go to different depths um, in your mixes. So that's why I pick all three Forage Collards. Uh, the cattle have been really going after it. It's something I wish I would have purchased uh, in the past, uh, but it will be in the future of our mixes. Um, on the broadleafs, uh, Basilia and flax are great uh, pollinator attractors. So they're going to bring in a lot of diversity of insects into your field, which is going to just be really beneficial um, to that that whole system. So I encourage you get as getting Facilia and flax um, into the mix. Flax is really great as well because it. Um, has a great relationship with mycorrhizal fungus. So if mycorrhizal fungus is something that you're trying to bring back to your fields, I really recommend having flax in the mix. Chicory, um, I don't like the way it turned out in our particular mix, but I, I still might go back to it because it has such a deep tap root. Um, it also uh, has really great, uh, I don't know how to, the terminology and everything, but it's really good for the cattle's gut system and helps them naturally fight off um, parasites. So chicory is something that I, I put in the mix. Maybe I just need to do it a little thicker, um, but it, it did not do well competing against the, the oats. So that's one thing to think about when you guys are putting together a mix in the future um, as you do some of these things. One of the benefits of the oats is it, it, it fights off weed pressure but it also can kind of hinder some of these other uh, plants in the mix if they don't get the opportunity to get going uh, in the very beginning. So something to think about when you're putting together these mixes, what are your particular goals? Um, if you're wanting to get ch chicory out in the mix to be a benefit to your cattle, um, you might want to pull back on the oats and do another grass with it um, and then increase the amount of chicory that you're planting in your mix. Guys, the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the benefit of ro doing rotational grazing with your cattle. Um, not just on spring cover crop mixes, but in general, you want to be doing rotational grazing because there's, there's really multiple benefits. So let's go ahead and dive in and cover those multiple benefits. The number one benefit is it reduces compaction over your entire field. Two, it puts armor on the soil, which is gonna protect your soil uh, from the heat of the sun and from your ground baking out. Three, uh, it improves the, the overall health of your animal. And then four, it does a better job of suppressing weeds when you do rotational grazing. Okay guys, the cows have joined the video, so hopefully we'll be able to get through this and the sound quality will be okay, even with the calves bellering for their moms, the moms bellering for their calves. 
So number one on the compaction issue, it reduces the amount of compaction over the entire field. You will face compaction issues where you have the tank. Um, so that kind of gives you uh, the option of doing back grazing to the tank, which will increase the amount of compaction you have in lanes where you've back grazed, uh, but will reduce the amount of compaction in other areas where they're getting the new paddocks. Or you can move the tanks every day or every two days uh, like we've been doing, but that'll be something that we can talk about in a future video. I just wanna bring up for this video when you're getting started, definitely ro think about rotational grazing or, or I, I don't even know that you should be doing this unless you're rotational grazing because I think if you're taking your farm ground out of production to add the cover crops to get the benefit of the cover crops, you don't wanna go backwards and have a lot of compaction over your field because you weren't doing rotational grazing. So definitely recommend rotational grazing because of the reduction of compaction when you're doing this. The second point I brought up was armor on the soil. I love having this armor on the soil because it's protecting the soil from the sun. If it's 100 degrees out and you have armor on the soil, you're gonna reduce the ground temperature at least by 20%. Um, if you have no ground, uh, if, if you have no armor on the soil, you can increase that by quite a bit. I think I've seen people show that it's around 100, 130 degrees or more. Uh, anyway, I, I, what I do, what I do remember is, is that it's a lot hotter. Uh, your microbes bake out and you're not having the, the health of the soil that you want if you don't have the armor. So that's another benefit of doing the rotational grazing. The third thing is, is you're forcing these animals to eat everything in that paddock rather than picking and choosing what they want um, in a particular area. So it's better for their gut health because they're getting a diversity of those plant species um, in their ruminum and it's benefiting the, those animals that way. Lastly, because the armor, we're reducing the amount of weed pressure we're going to have on this field um, because of the, the armor protecting the, the soil and keeping less uh, weeds from germinating. Weeds out here like pigweed and, and kochia, they love um, bare soil. So the more armor we get on the soil, the better it is uh, for weed suppression as well. That's all I have for you in today's video, guys. Uh, in a future video, I'll go over how we do rotational grazing um, in a, a, several different environments and kind of what we've learned uh, through the past year, few years, what works, what doesn't work. If there's something you wanna see in a future video, make sure you uh, let me know in the comments below and make sure you keep pursuing soil health. This is Jay Young out. Peace. Thank you.